Okay guys, good morning. Okay, so topic natin for today, chapter 15, Evaluation, Inspection, Analytics, and Models. So aims, so describe the key concept associated with the inspection methods, explain how to do heuristic evaluation and walkthroughs, explain the role of analytics in evaluation, describe how to use, how to use fit loss, a predictive model. Okay, so sometimes it is not practical to involve user in an evaluation because they are not available or there is uh, insufficient time or it is difficult to find people. So in such uh, circumstances, other people often refer to us uh, expert or researcher can provide feedback. These people are uh, who are knowledgeable about both interaction design and the needs and typical behavior of user. Various inspection methods were developed alternatives to usability testing in the early 1990s, drawing on the software engineering practice where code and other types of inspection are commonly used. The evaluation method described so far in our previous lesson have involved interaction with or direct observation of user. So in this uh, lesson, we introduce methods that are based on understanding a uh, user through knowledge codified in heuristic or data collected remotely or models that predict user performance. So none of this method uh, required user to be present during the evaluation. Inspection methods typically involve an expert role playing the user for whom the product is designed, analyzing aspect of an interface, and identifying any potential usability problem by using a set of guidelines. So the most well-known are the heuristic evaluation and the walkthroughs. Um, analytics involve user interaction lagging, which is usually done remotely. So predictive models involve analyzing the various physical and mental operation that are needed to perform a particular task at the interface and operationalizing them as a quantitative measure. So one of the most commonly used predictive models is the Pitts law. So heuristic evaluation. Uh, heuristic evaluation is a usability inspection method that was uh, developed by Nielsen and his colleague mm. and later modified by other researcher for evaluating specific types of system. So in heuristic evaluation, expert guided by a set of usability principle known as a uh, heuristic. So evaluate whether user interface elements such as dialog box, menus, navigation structure, online health, and so on. Uh, conform to tried and tested principle. So this uh, heuristic closely resemble high level design principle. Example, making design consistent, reducing memory load, and using terms that user understand. So the original set of heuristic for HCI evaluation was developed by Jacob Nelson. And his uh, colleague who derived them empirically from the analysis of a 249 usability problem. So revised version of Nielsen original heuristic. Um, First, we have the visibility of system status. So visibility of system status, the system should always keep user informed about what is going on through appropriate feedback with reasonable time. Next, we have um, match between system and the real world. So meaning um, the system should speak the user language with words, phrases, and concepts familiar to the user rather than system-oriented terms. Follow read word uh, convention, making information appear in a natural and a logical order. Then we have user control and freedom. User control and freedom, um, user often choose system function by mistake and will need a clearly marked emergency exit to leave the unwanted state without having to go through an extended dialogue box. 
<coughs> example, support of undo and redo. Next, we have the consistency, consistency and standard. So users should not have to wonder whether different words, situation, or action mean the same thing. Uh, meaning follow the platform convention. Then we have the error prevention. Okay. Uh, error prevention, so even better than good error message is a careful design that prevent a problem from occurring in the first place. So either eliminate error prone condition or, uh, or check for them a present user with a confirmation option before they commit to the action. Then we have the recognition, then recall. Uh, it means minimize the user memory load by making objects, action, and option visible. The user should not have to remember information from one part of the dialogue to another. Instruction for use of system should be visible or easily retrievable whether, uh, whenever appropriate. Then we have the flexibility and efficiency of use uh, accelerators so unseen by the novice user may often speed up the interaction for the expert user such that the system can cater to both inexperienced and experienced user so meaning it allows user to tailor frequent action then we have the aesthetic and minimalist design mm. It means dialog box should not contain information that is uh, irrelevant or rarely needed. So every extra unit of information in a dialog com uh, competes with the relevant units of information and diminish their relative uh, visibility. Next we have um, help user recognize, diagnose, recover from errors. Uh, Message should be, or error message should be expressed in a plain language. So meaning no codes. So precisely indicate the problem and constructively suggest a solution. Uh, health, um, health and documentation. So health and documentation. So even though it is better if the system can be used without documentation, it may be necessary to provide health and documentation. Any such information should be easy to search, focus on the user tasks, please, concrete step to be carried out and not to be too large before reading on. Okay, so next. Yeah. So number of evaluators and problem. So um, this heuristic uh, are intended to be used by judging aspect of the interface against uh, them. For example, uh, if a new social networking system is being evaluated, the evaluator may consider how a user would find, find out how to add friends to her network or to his network. So the evaluator is meant to go through the interface several times, inspecting the various interaction elements and comparing them with the least of usability principle. Uh, for example, heuristic, Okay, so on each uh, iteration, usability problem will be identified or their diagnosis will be refined until um, she or he is satisfied that the majority of the of the of them are clear. Although many heuristics uh, apply to the most product, example to be consistent and provide meaningful feedback, some of the core heuristics are too general for evaluating products that have uh, come, uh, come onto the market since Nielsen and Mollich first developed the method, such as smartphones and other mobile devices, digital toys, online communities, ambient device, and new web services. Nielsen suggests developing category-specific heuristic that apply to specific class of product as a supplement to the general heuristic. Evaluator and researcher uh, have therefore typically developed their own heuristic by tailoring a Nielsen heuristic with other design guidelines, market research, and requirements document. Mm, exactly with uh, heuristic are uh, appropriate and how many are needed for different products is the debatable and depends on the goals of the evaluation. 
but most sets of heuristic have been have between five and ten items. So this number provides a good range of usability criteria by which to judge the various aspects of the interface. More than 10 becomes difficult for evaluators to remember fewer, uh, fewer than 5 tends not to be sufficient and discriminating. A key question that is frequently asked is how many evaluators are needed to carry out two heuristic evaluation. While one evaluator can identify a large number of problems, he or she may not catch all of them. Okay? Sure, she may also have a tendency to concentrate more on one aspect of aspect at the expense of missing other. For example, uh, in a study of heuristic evaluation, where 19 evaluators were asked to find 16 usability problems in a voice response system, allowing the customer access to their back account. Mm. Nelson found a substantial difference between the number and type of usability problem found by the different evaluator. He also notes that uh, while some usability problems are very easy to find by all evaluators, there are some problems that are found by very few experts. Therefore, he urged uh, that it is important uh, to involve multiple evaluators in any heuristic evaluation and recommends between three and five evaluators. Mm. His findings suggest that uh, they can typically identify, identify around 75% of total usability problem as shown in our figure, last uh, slide natin. Okay, so however, employing multiple experts can be costly. Skillful experts can capture many of the usability problem by themselves and some uh, uh, consultancies now use this technique as the basis for critiquing interactive products, a process that has become known as an expert critic or expert crit in some countries. But using only one or two experts to conduct a heuristic evaluation can be a problematic since research has a challenge, Nielsen findings and question whether even three to five evaluator is adequate. For example, um, Cacton and Woolrich point out that the number of experts needed to find 70% of problem depends on the nature of the problems. Their analysis of the problem frequency and severity suggests that the highly uh, misleading findings can uh, result. So the conclusion from this is that more is better, but more is also more expensive. Okay. So, however, um, because user and special facilities are not needed for heuristic evaluation and it is uh, comparatively inexpensive and quick, it is popular with developer and it's often known as a discount evaluation. So, for a quick evaluation of an early design, one or two experts can probably identify most potential disability problem. But if a thorough evaluation of a fully working prototype is needed, then having a team or expert conducting the evaluation and comparing their findings would be advisable. Heuristic for websites focus on criteria. In the recent year, okay, so considerable attention has been focused on the web mobile apps, and other digital technologies. Okay, so heuristic for evaluating websites have become increasingly important and several slightly different sets of heuristic have been developed. A different sets of uh, for evaluating websites have been developed based on Nielsen original 10 heuristic. One of these was developed by Andy Vad. Okay, so after discovering that Nielsen heuristic did not address the problem, of a continuously evolving web, he also found that uh, there was an overlap between several of the guidelines and that they varied widely in terms of their scope and specificity, which made them difficult to use. Okay, so extract from the USIC developed by Bud uh, that emphasized the web design issue. First, we have the clarity. 
Okay, so clarity make the system as clear, concise, and meaningful as possible for the intended audience. Write a clear, concise copy. Only use technical language for a technical audience. Write clear and meaningful, uh, meaningful labels. Use meaningful icons. So yun meaning ng clarity natin. Next, we have um, minimize unnecessary complexity and cognitive load. Um, so meaning make the system as simple as possible for the user to accomplish their tasks. So remove unnecessary functionality, process step, and visual clutter. Use progressive disclosure to hide advanced feature. Break down complicated processes into a multiple step. Uh, prioritize using size, shape, color, alignment, and proximity. Then we have provide the user with the context. Okay, so interface should provide user with a sense of context in time and space. Mm. Provide a clear site name and purpose. Highlight the current section. Mm. In the navigation, provide a breadcrumb trail. Use appropriate feedback message. Show numbers of steps in a process. Um, Reduce the perception of the latency by providing visual cues, example, yung progress indicator, or by allowing user to complete other tasks while waiting. Next, we have promote positive and pleasurable user experience. Okay, so um, the user should be treated with respect and the design should be aesthetically pleasing and promote a pleasurable and rewarding experience. So create a pleasurable and attractive design, provide easily attainable goals and provide rewards for the usage and progression. So using heuristic to evaluate uh, ambient display. Okay. Again, so heuristic evaluation has also been used to evaluate abstract aesthetic peripheral display that portray non critical information at the periphery of the user attention. So since these devices are not designed uh, for task performance, the researcher had to develop a set of heuristics that took this into account. So they did this by developing two ambient display. One indicated how to uh, close a bus in the bus stop by showing its number move upward on the screen. The other indicated how uh, light or dark it was outside by lightening or darkening the light display. So in our figure, there are modified uh, Nielsen heuristic to address the characteristic of ambient display and as a group of experts to evaluate the display using them. Okay, so the heuristic that they developed includes some that were specifically geared towards ambient systems, such as visibility of state. So the state of display should be clear when it's placed in the intended setting. Peripherality of display, so the display should be an um, obtrusive and remain so unless it requires the user attention. User should be able to easily monitor the display. So in this study, the researcher found out that a three to five evaluator were able to identify 40 to 60% of known usability issue. In the follow-up study, different researchers used the same heuristic with different ambient application. They found 75% uh, of known usability problems with the eight evaluators and 35 to 55% were found with three to five evaluators, suggesting that the more evaluator you have, the more accurate the result will be. As other researchers uh, have also reported, Heuristic for other products adopted from Nielsen original heuristic have continued to be developed and include heuristic for uh, evaluating share group well, uh, video games, multiplayer games, and online communities, and information visualization. And eight golden rules of a set guideline first developed in the mid 1980s are also frequently adapted for use with the uh, different types of system and environment and used as a heuristic for identifying usability problem. 
So yung first, sabi nga uh, dito so sa 8 na 10 golden rule, uh, strive for consistency. So, consistent sequence of action should be required in similar situation. Identical to terminology should be used in from menus and help screen. And consistent color, laid out, capitalization, fonts, and so on should be employed. Exemptions such as record confirmation or delete commands or no echoing password should be comprehensible and limited in number. Next, uh, cater to universal use usability, meaning recognize the needs of diverse user and design for uh, plasticity and facilitating transformation of content. So now, by to expert uh, difference, age range, disabilities, and technological diversity, each enrich and spectrums of requirements that guides design. Adding picture to know by such as uh, explanation and pictures for experts such as shortcuts and faster pacing can enrich the interface design and improve the first services of system quality. Next, uh, offer informative feedback. So for every user action, there should be a system feedback. For frequent and monitor action, the response can be modest. Whereas for infrequent and major action, the response should be more substantial. Visual presentation of object of interest provided a convenient environment for showing changes explicitly. Next, we have the dialogue, a uh, design dialogue to yield uh, closure. Sequence of action should be organized into groups with the beginning, middle, and end. Informative feedback at the completion of a group of action gives uh, operation the satisfaction of accomplishing a sense of relief a signal to drop contingency plans from the minds, and an indicator to prepare for the next group of action. For example, uh, e-commerce website, move user from selecting product to the checkout, ending with a clear confirmation page to complete the transaction. Next, we have prevent errors. As much as possible, design the systems uh, such that user cannot make serious error. For example, gray out menu items that are not appropriate and do not allow alphabetic characters in numeric entry fields. If a user makes an error, the interface should de uh, detect the error and, uh, and offer simple, constructive, and specific instruction for recovery. For example, a uh, user should not have to retype an entire name address from if they enter invalid zip code, but rather should be guided to repair only the, uh, the quality part. Uh, error action should leave the system state unchanged or the interface should give instruction about the restoring the state. Next, we have permit easy reversal of action. As much as possible, action should be reversible. So this feature uh, uh, relieves anxiety since the user knows uh, the errors can be undone and encourage exploration of unfamiliar option. The units of reversibility may be a single action or data entry task or complete group of actions such as entry of name address block. Next, we have the support, internal uh, locus of control. So experienced user uh, strongly desire the sense that they are in charge of the interface and that the interface responds to their action. They don't want uh, surprises or changes in familiar behavior, and they are annoyed by reduced data entry sequence, difficulty of obtaining necessary information, and inability to produce their desired result. Last, we have the reduce the short-term memory loads. Humans limit capacity for information processing in short-term memory is, um, is that we can remember so, so it requires a designer to avoid interface in which user must remember information from one screen and then use the information on the other, other screen. It means that the smartphone should not require the entry of the phone numbers. Website location should remain visible. Multiple page display should be consolidated and sufficient training time should be allotted for complex sequence of action. 
So, three stages for doing heuristic evaluation. Doing heuristic evaluation can be broken down into, into three main stages. Okay, first is um, the briefing session to tell expert what to do. Okay. So, a prepared script is useful as a guide and to ensure each person receive the same briefing. Then the evaluation period in which each expert typically spend one to two hours independently inspecting the product using a heuristic for guidance. The expert need to take at least two passes through the interface. The first pass gives a feel for the flow of the interaction and the product scope. The second pass allows the evaluator to focus on specific interface element in the context of the whole product and to identify potential usability problem. If the evaluation uh, is for functioning product, the evaluator needs to save some specific user tasks in mind so that the exploration is focused. Suggesting tasks may be helpful, but many experts suggest their own tasks. However, this approach is less easy if the evaluation is done early in a design uh, when there's are only screen mock-up or specification. The approach needs to be adapted to the evaluation circumstances. While working through the interface specification or mock-ups, a second person may record the problem identified or the evaluator may think aloud alternatively she may take a notes herself. Evaluator should be encouraged to be as specific as possible and to record each problem clearly. And last, the briefing session, with session in which expert together to prioritize problem. Okay, so they found a suggest a solution. So the heuristic function of the evaluator's attention on a particular issue. So selecting appropriate heuristic is critically important. So even so, there are there is sometimes less agreement among evaluator that than is is desirable as discussed in our next example. Okay, there are fewer practical and ethical issues in heuristic evaluation uh, than for other methods uh, because users are not involved. A week is often cited as the time needed to train evaluator, but this depends on the person' initial expertise. So, typical user can be taught to do heuristic evaluation, although there have been claims that this approach is not very successful. A variation of this method is to take a team approach that may also involve user. So, advantages and problems. So, you might have been uh, have the ex impression that heuristic evaluation is a uh, panacea for designer and that it can reveal all the wrong with the design. However, it has a problem. Shortly after heuristic evaluation was developed, several independent studies uh, compare heuristic evaluation with other methods, particularly user testing. They found that the different approaches often identify different problems and that sometimes heuristic evaluation is a severe problem. So this urge for the using complementary methods. Furthermore, heuristic evaluation should not be taught as a replacement for user testing. Another problem concerns expert um, reporting problems that don't exist. In other words, some of the expert predictions are wrong. Uh, Bailey's uh, site analysis from three published resources sources showing that only around 30% of the problem uh, reported were real usability problem, some of which were serious, others trivial. However, the heuristic evaluator missed uh, about 20% of user problems. Furthermore, about 43% of the problems identified by the expert were not problems at all. Okay, so they were false alarm. So Bailey's points out point out that this means only about half of the problem identified are true problem. 
More specifically, for every true usability problem identified, there will be a little over false alarm. One is to two and about one half of the missed problem. So in this analysis is true, heuristic uh, evaluators tend to identify more false alarm and miss more problems than they have through hits. So the question is how can the number of false alarm or miss serious problems be reduced? So checking the expert really have uh, the expertise that they have claimed would help, but how can this be done? So one way to overcome this problem is to have several evaluators. So this helps to reduce the impact of one person experience or poor performance using heuristic evaluation along with user testing and other method is also a good idea. Mm, one heuristic evaluation has proven to be very useful and used by many usability experts over the years. The guidelines were designed to be applied to PC-based application. They were being developed in 1980s. Given the range of current technologies, example, smartphones and various other mobile device, tablets, um, ambient system, they have been developed since Nielsen device, his original sets of heuristic. So it raises the question whether they can continue to be used to test usability and user experience of the new product. For example, how useful will they be for evaluating wearable technologies such as smartwatches and augmented uh, glasses? So what are the heuristics might be needed? There's also overlap between how evaluation, heuristic, and other kinds of design guidelines are used. Design guidelines and often converted into heuristics, so it is possible to use this instead or in combination with heuristic evaluation. Cognitive walkthroughs. Okay, so walkthroughs have been used by system developers for many years for inspecting code and other concepts offers an alternative approach to heuristic, heuristic evaluation for predicting user problems without uh, user testing. As the name suggests, walkthroughs involves walking through a task with a product and nothing problematic usability feature. Most walkthrough methods do not involve users. Others such as pluralistic walkthroughs involves a team that may include user as well as developer and usability speci uh, specialist. So, um, Mm. Cognitive walkthroughs involve simulating the user problem uh, solving process of each step in a human computer dialogue, checking to see if the user goals and memory for action can be assumed to lead the next correction action. So um, the defining feature is that they focus on evaluating design for ease of learning, a focus that is motiv motivated by observ observation that users learn by exploration. Okay, so the step involved in cognitive walkthroughs are we have the um, characteristic of typical user are identified and documented and sample tasks are developed that focus on aspect of the design to be evaluated. A description, mock-up, or prototype of the interface to be developed is also produced along with a clear sequence of action needed for the user to complete the task. A designer and one of more expert evaluator come together to do the analysis. The evaluator walk through the action sequence for each task, placing it with the context of a typical scenario. And as they do uh, this, they try to answer the following question. Okay, first is, will the correct action be sufficient, evident to the user? So, or will the user know what to do to achieve the task? So will the user notice that the correct action is available? So meaning can user see the button or menu item that they should be used for the next action? It is uh, apparent when it's needed. Next is it, will the user uh, associate and interpret the response from the action correctly? So meaning will the user know from the feedback 
that they have made or correct or incorrect choice of action. In other words, uh, will user know what to do, see how to do it, and understand from feedback whether the action was correct or not. Um, as the walkthrough is being done, a record of critical information is compiled in which the assumption about the uh, would cause problem and why are identified. So note about side issues and design changes are made. A summary of a result is a compile. Okay. Next, the design is the revise of the peaks of the problem presented. So plus a pluralistic walkthrough. So what is pluralistic walkthrough? Okay, pluralistic walkthroughs are other type of walkthroughs um, in which user developers and usability experts work together to step through a task or scenario. Discussing usability issue associated with the dialogue elements involved in the scenario step. In a pluralistic um, walkthrough, each of the evaluator is asked to assume the role of a typical user. Scenarios of use consisting of few prototype screen are given to each evaluator who read, uh, writes down the sequence of action they should take to move from one screen to another without uh, comparing with fellow panelists. When the panelists discuss the action, they each uh, suggest before moving to the next round of screen. So this process continues until all the scenarios have been evaluated. Okay, so the benefits of pluralistic uh, walkthroughs include a strong focus on user tasks at a uh, detailed level. For example, looking at the step taken. Okay, so this uh, level of analysis, analysis can be uh, valuable for certain kinds of systems such as safety critical ones where a usability problem identified for a single step could be critical to its safety and efficiency. The approach lends itself well a uh, participatory design practices by involving multidisciplinary team in which users play a key role. Furthermore, the group brings a variety of expertise and opinions for um, interpreting each stage of interaction. Limitation includes having to get all the experts together at once and then proceed at the rate of the slowest. Furthermore, only a limited number of scenarios and hence paths through the interface can usually be explored because of the time constraint. Evaluation using analytics. So analytics is a method for evaluating user traffic through a system. So mostly such systems involve um, selling products or service. Uh, so knowing what customers do and what is important for improving the product or service. But analytics are also being used for evaluating non-transactional system. Uh, when used to examine a traffic on a website or part of the website, as I mentioned in our lesson in chapter seven, the analytics are known as web analytics. Web analytics can be collected locally or remotely across the internet by logging user activity, counting and analyzing the data in order to understand what part of the website are being used and when. Although analytics are from our form of evaluation that is particularly useful for evaluating the usability of a website, they are also valuable for business planning, including the business of online education. Recently, analytics uh, have been applied to understand how learners in massive open online courses and other web-based uh, web education courses interact with this system. For example, the developers of this system are in, uh, interested in such, uh, such question as why do learners enroll in this system and what point do learners tend to drop out and why? What are the characteristics of learners who complete the course compared with those who do not complete it. So um, now, so many companies are developing their own analytics tools. Other use of the service of uh, companies such as Google and Pisastat, so which uh, specialize in providing analytics and the analysis necessary to understand 
large volume of data. Typically, these um, companies present their analysis in forms that are easy to develop for developers and website uh, manager to understand. For example, in graphs, tables, and other types of data visualization. Mm, the homepage of this is stat or yung prizesstat.com so contains a short uh, promotional video describing the kinds of services that the company offers and why these services are important to businesses. An example of how web analytics can be used to analyze and help developers to improve a uh, website performance is provided by Bicetat Analysis. Okay, so um, example, okay, uh, Mountain Wines, okay, uh, it's located in Saratoga, California. So it aims to create a memorable experience for guests who visit the vineyard. So following on the traditional started by Paul Mason, world famous winemaker, Mountain Wines offers a beautiful venue uh, for a variety of events, including weddings, corporate meetings, dinner parties, birthday, concert, and vacation. So Mountain Wines uses a variety of advertising media to attract customer to its website. And in 2010, invest, invested about uh, $10,000 a month in advertising. However, the website has remained unchanged for several years because the company didn't have a way of evaluating its effectiveness and could not decide whether to increase or decrease the investment in it. Then they then decide to employ uh, business staff to use their web analytics tools. Prior to the in, uh, enlisting this company, the only record that Mountain Wines had of the effectiveness of its adver advertising came from the front desk employees who were uh, instructed to ask visitor, how did you hear about Mountain Wines? So this is that uh, provided Mountain Wines with data showing how their website was being used by potential customer. Example, yung data like that's shown in figure uh, natin, figure 15.4 and 15.5. Provides an overview of the number of page view of the website per day. So in figure 15.5 provide additional details and show the hours by our traffic. So clicking on the first icon for the details show where the IP address of the traffic are located. So visitors can also provide information about such things as which visitors are new to the site, which are with, uh, returners and which other pages visitor came from. So using this data, and data provided by Visitat, Mountain Ones could see visitor totals and traffic average, traffic sources, traffic uh, visitor activity, and more. They discover uh, the importance of visibility for the top, uh, top search words. They could uh, pinpoint where guests were going on their website, and they could see where their guests were geographically, geographically located. Social analysis. So more recently, other types of uh, specialist analytics have also been developed such as visual analytics, in which thousands and sometimes millions of data points are displayed and manipulated visually, uh, such as social network analysis. Example. So light logging is another interesting variation that can be used for evaluation as well as for sharing information with uh, friends, family, and colleagues. So typically, live uh, logging involves recording GPS location data and personal interaction data on smartphones. In an evaluation context, this can raise privacy concern. Even though users tend to get used to being logged, they generally want to remain in a control of logging. So this is the dilemma. Natin. So, dilemma analyzing uh, social networking behavior. So, sabi nga, invasion of privacy. So, some analytics software can be used by IT administrator to track uh, workers' behavior on social networking site during working hours. Uh, the data collected can be used to determine who is uh, collaborating with whom and to inform developers about how much of their 
application are being used or concept often referred to as stickiness. So while this reason for tracking user appear to be a bona fide, so this is a threat to uh, personal privacy. Uh, using web analytics, again, so there are two types of web analytics, on-site and off-site analytics. So yung on-site analytics are used by website owners to measure visitor behavior. Yung off-site measure a website visibility and potential to acquire an audience on the internet regardless of the who owns the website. So in recent years, however, the difference between off-site and on-site analytics has blurred, but some people still use this term. Additional sources may also be used to augment the data collected about a website, such as an email, direct mail, campaign data sales, uh, data sales and history data, which can be paired with uh, web traffic data to provide further insight into the user behavior. Example natin yung Google Analytics. Even as early as 2012, Google Analytics was, Analytics was the most widely used on the site web analytics and statistics service. More than 50% of the 10,000 most popular website at that time use Google Analytics and its popularity continues to soar. Um, so it's part of Google Analytics for, for campaign website. For the previous edition of this book, idbook.com for the week uh, starting at the end of the November 2018 until the beginning of December 2018. Okay, so, it's some popular na analytics natin, yung Google Analytics talaga. So, matagal na siyang ginagamit since 2012. So, in addition to Google Analytics, other tools continue to emerge that provide additional layers of information. So, good access control option and raw and real-time data collection. Uh, most analytics, I think another type, okay, so track search marketing, social media marketing, and brand activity links and content marketing. And it's particularly useful for link management and analysis. analysis. So yung uh, most analytics natin. Pwede nyo siyang i-visit sa www.most.com. We also have the um, true social metrics. Uh, ito naman is track social media metrics and helps calculate social media marketing. Okay? So, yung mga types natin ng analytics and meron pa tayong keys metrics, mm, click tail, ito naman record website visitor action and uses meta statistic to create visual heat map. Predictive models. Okay. So similar to inspection methods and analytics, predictive models evaluate a system without user being present. So rather than involving expert evaluator, role-playing user as inspection or tracking their behavior as in analytics predictive models use formulas to derive various measure of user performance. Predictive modeling uh, provide estimate of the efficiency of different system for various kinds of tasks. For example, a smartphone designer may choose to use predictive model because it can enable her to determine accurately which is uh, optimal layout of keys on the phone for allowing common operation to be performed. So two types of predictive models have been particularly influential in HCI and interaction design over, uh, over the years. The Pitts law, which uh, we will discuss, Okay, in the next uh, slide. And the GOMS or GOMS, Pamid Up Models, which are rarely used now as a tool were designed in the early 1980s, primarily for comparing PC-based interface for tasks that were highly predictable. Okay, so the FITS law. So the FITS law, uh, predicts the time it takes to reach a target using pointing device. So it was originally used in human factor research to model the relation relationship between the speed and accuracy when moving towards a target on a display. In an interaction design, it has been used to describe the time it takes to, uh, to point at a target based on the size of the object 
and the distance to the object. Specifically, it is used to model the time it takes to select object on the screen, such as alphanumeric for different spatial configuration. One of its main benefits is that uh, it can help designer decide whether to locate physical or digital button, what size they should be, and how close together they should be on a touch display or physical device. To begin with, it was most uh, useful for designing physical uh, laptop or PC, keyboards, layouts, and the placement of physical keys on mobile devices such as smartphone, uh, watches, and remote controls. Since then, it has been used more for designing the layout of digital input, display for touchscreen interfaces, uh, especially for considering the effectiveness of the new ways of single-digit typing such as using uh, finger sw uh, swiping. So the bigger the target, the easier and quicker it is to reach. This is why interface have a big buttons, are easier to use than interface that presents lots of tiny buttons cramps together. Uh, Pitts though also predict uh, that the most quickly accessed target on any computer display are the four corners of the screen. This, uh, this is because of their uh, pinning action. Example, the side of the display constraint, the user from over stepping the target. However, as pointed out by Tug on his AskTug.com website, um, corners seem strangely to be avoided at all costs by the designer. Pitch lock can be useful for evaluating system where the time to physically locate an object is critical to the task at hand. In particular, it can help designer to think about where to locate object on the screen in relation to each other. This is uh, especially useful for mobile device where there is a limited space for placing icons and buttons on the screen. For example, in a study carried out by Nokia, its law was used to predict expert, uh, expert text uh, entry rates for several inputs methods on 12 key cell phone key pad. The study helped the designer to make decision about the size of the key, their positioning, and the sequence of uh, presses to perform common tasks. Trade-offs between the size of a device and accuracy of using it were made uh, with the help of the calculation from this model. Pitts law have also been used to compare eye tracking input with manual input for visual target. So to compare different ways of mapping a uh, Chinese character to the keyboard of cell phone, and, and also to investigate the effect of the size of physical gap between display and proximity of targets in multiple display environment. And it, it also used to um, evaluate tilt as an input method for device with built-in accelerometers such as touchscreen, phones, and tablets computer. So the as, uh, astag.com website also discussed the application of its law to smartphones and other new technologies with limited screen real estate. Uh, okay. So key point, inspection can be used to evaluate requirements, mock up and functional prototypes of system. User testing and heuristic evaluation may reveal different usability of problem. Design guidelines can be used to develop heuristic Walkthroughs are focused, so are suitable evaluating small parts of products. And analytics involve collecting data, user activity of a website. So, in our lesson, or in this uh, lesson, uh, presented inspection evaluation method, focusing heuristic evaluation and walkthrough, which are usually done by heurist uh, specialists, usually referred to an expert who role plays a user interaction with the design and prototypes and a specification using their substantial knowledge of the kinds of problems that users typically encounter and then offer their opinion. So heuristic evaluation and walkthroughs offer evaluator a structure to guide the evaluation process. And analytics um, in which user interaction are allowed are often performed remotely and without a user being aware that their interaction are being tracked. So very large volume of data are collected 
anonymized and statistically analyzed using specially developed software services. So the analysis provides information about how a system is used. Example, how different versions of website or prototype perform or which part of a website are seldom used possibly due to the poor usability design or lack of appeal. Data are often uh, presented visually so that it, it is easier to see trends and interprets in result. So that's the Pitt's law is an example of a technique that can be used to predict user performance by de determining whether a proposed interface system or a keypad layout will be optimal. Typically, Pitt's law is used for used to compare different design of layouts for virtual or physical objects such as button on a device or screen for small sequence of frequently performed tasks. So evaluators typically find that they have uh, modified this method for evaluation with the market since Pitt's law was originally developed. So this is similar to the other methods discussed in our earlier lesson, which are frequently also have to be modified. Okay, so that's it for today and thank you.